What up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Santa Cruz Medicinals Radio. We got the champ TJ Dillashaw here today. Thank you for coming, bro. Oh, thanks for having me. And I get to come down to visit Del Mar. You know, dude, so, it's so nice here. It's amazing. I have to wake up and go and running on the beach and threw up a video saying like how easy it'd be to be in shape down here. You know, like oh yeah, see everyone on the beach running in the morning. You know, dude, like I a, do those videos. It is, and I, I do those videos where I'm I'm in the soda aisle and I'm like paying people to stop drinking soda. <laughs> we can't do them here. Yeah, my videographer and I hung out in the soda aisle for hours. And it was like one dude and he was buying fucking sparkling water. We're like, we have to go, you know, inland. We got to go to like Modesto or how crazy Fresno is it or something. That uh, depending on where you live is like how you're going to be eating or the lifestyle you live, you know? Yeah. I mean, like you see all the shit about the blue zones, mm-hmm. which first of all, the blue zones, they eat meat, fish, eggs, and dairy. That's another pretty exhausting thing. I know there might be one or two blue zones that don't, but like I lived in uh, the Nicoya Peninsula in Costa Rica, which is one of the blue zones. And then you come back and you see all this plant-based propaganda around that. And I'm like, dude, I was there. Like, they're eating a lot of fish and eggs. They eat meat. Like, they have amazing grass-fed beef in Costa Rica. So it's just kind of a, a goofy thing that they push. But something I've noticed, too, when I travel out of the country, I can even eat foods that I normally wouldn't eat here, and I won't put the weight on when I travel. Like, I yeah. go to Colombia, and you can eat their bread and some of their, you know, they don't have anything like processed and as shitty as we have it here in the States. I, and I I'll still lose weight. A hundred percent. I think a big thing of that is glyphosate. Yeah. I, and like, we don't know exactly what's going on with glyphosate. We had some of the functional medicine doctors in here and they basically think that it's wrecking your gut microbiome uh, because it's antibacterial, it's antimicrobial and you're eating that. And you know, the, the shills of glyphosate say, Oh, the only study showing that's bad is from the people working with it. Like they're inhaling it and yeah, it causes cancer if you inhale it and stuff. But there's such a trace amount on your food that you don't have to worry about it. I'm highly skeptical of that. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Like I think that's sketch. Um, Anything to tell you not to worry about, you should probably worry about. You should probably worry about it. Yeah. hundred um, percent. One thing I want to say is it's dope or even in here because you ran, you started a supplement company. Yeah. And as I was saying to you earlier, like, there is this competition in the supplement world where there's been so many people we've reached out to that are either affiliated heavily with a supplement brand or run a supplement brand and they just won't even do any content with me or film anything. And it always just takes me by surprise because like from the bottom of my heart, I'm just trying to make people healthier. And sometimes good supplements are a part of that. And so I don't even like think like that. I'm not like, oh, this dude runs a supplement company. I don't want him on the podcast because we make like some of the same products. Uh, so yeah, just props to you for that, bro. Of course, man. Um, I come from a place where I can't be afraid of competition, right? Because yeah. competition is going to make us better. And if I'm if I have no one competing with me, I can create the most bullshit product, and you're going to have to take it because I tell you it's the best kind of yeah. thing. But if I get held accountable by someone like yourself or other companies that are doing it the right way, then it's going to do nothing but make us all better. You know? So. Yeah, absolutely, bro. I, I completely <clears throat> agree. Um, when did you found Wild Society? Why did you Why did you start it? That's a good question. Um. So I competed for 14 years in the UFC um, with countless sponsors and supplement products and sponsored by companies that I didn't believe in. I wouldn't take their products, but they'd pay me to post about yeah. it, which it's bullshit, right? Bro, it sucks. Sprite, I have an email from Sprite. I'm going to do like a TikTok about it. They're like, do you want to post? A, I'm like, Who, how the fuck did this even get in my inbox? But yeah, it's, yeah, it's I mean, before I started like uh, speaking my mind on nutrition or what I've learned, I learned a lot throughout my career. Um, but when I, when I first started fighting, I didn't care about nutrition or diet. I was in my mid twenties and I got out of wrestling and even in wrestling too, I just thought working my ass off was more important than any of my diet or nutrition. And yeah. I kind of got away with it in my twenties, you know, cause I could work harder and get away with it and not be overworked or overtrained. Um, I guess until I got into my late twenties, early thirties, I met a coach, Sam Calavita out of the training lab that really turned me on to nutrition. And I started, you know, testing my hormone levels and seeing what I'm what, like my cortisol levels and my DHEA levels and seeing like what's going on through my body and how to get me to peak performance and all the things that I was taking and the way that I was living my life, the way that I wasn't sleeping right. wasn't, wasn't training right. wasn't taking rest days. I was crashing my body. Yeah. So I learned from him the ways that I should eat the ways that like, I mean, I'm avoiding all grains for the most part, like no sugars, no complex sugars, like a lot of great stuff within my diet, but then my supplementation and it skyrocketed my hormone levels. It made me feel younger yeah. at, at an older age. And so once I met him and started doing it, like I was, I was all in, I was bought into everything. And once I started getting towards the end of my career, I was tired of um, talking about products that 
actually weren't good for you. And so I decided to start developing my own, um, a company that was, I started working for that went under at the time muscle farm. Um, I just like, I could do it better. Yeah. Like what they're absolutely. doing, what they're creating. Yeah. It's going to be a heavy lift and I could do it myself. And so I started creating my own products and something I really can stand behind and that I feel good about posting this morning that like, I'm going for a run and I'm filling up with my concentrates that are grass fed. They got no sugar, sugar in it. They got no sugar alcohols. Like I added organic mushrooms to it. Like something like that. I feel good about posting. Yeah, you know? dude, that's like this for me. Like I'm sure you're the same way. It's like, I just wanted products that I wanted to take. And when you can formulate them yourself and know exactly what's going in there and then you can take them and then you can get your like friend. That's how our company started. It's like our friends started taking our products. Yeah. You know, I have friends that are jiu-jitsu athletes and MMA fighters and stuff. And like, they're coming to our house, like taking our products. Like, no, no, I need that. Like, it works. I'm like, we got to start selling this shit, dude. Like, and then I just get pissed off about seeing what's out there. Like proteins, for example, you have your way. Yeah. Dude, so many people have hit us up. I'm sure you're the exact same where they go, way used to mess up my gut, messed up my skin, made me feel horrible. I felt bloated after. Yes. And then I tried yours and it makes me feel amazing. Yeah. And it's like, Dude, it's not the the whey protein that's messing you up. It's the other ingredients in there. Like so five different types of gums, seed oils. We did a video on a whey that has red 40 wheat in it, corn syrup. It's like, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, I couldn't, couldn't agree more. We get a lot of messages all the time where most people were uh, like a whey protein concentrate would make them gassy. It would hurt their stomach. It would bloat them. And, and ours has not done that because how clean it is. Um, and then if you are someone that's, you know, lactose intolerant, go to an isolate. You yeah, know, exactly. I, you still need that animal based protein or go to a whole animal like beef protein like you make. Right. To something that's not going to mess with your stomach. I mean, yeah, there's so many ways. I mean, you need animal proteins if you're going to be a top level athlete or someone that wants to perform high. You know, it's true, man. Um, Dr. Huberman just did a podcast with this guy who's an expert in all things skin health. And I just did a video clipping like what he was saying. He was like the best diet for skin health is a high protein diet from animal sources. Yeah. And of course, fruits, veggies, even, you know, the grains, he's like, you know, whatever, but he's like an into everything, but that's like the basis of the diet. And then like hitting your protein goal has been so key for me. Yeah. And I'm sure as an athlete, you're the same way. I know right now you're trying to bulk up, right? Yeah. yeah. So like how much protein are you trying to get in? And I'm in probably eating 220 grams to 200 grams of protein a day, yep. which, you know, it's, it's hard to do all food, which most of it I do do. Like I eat a ribeye for lunch, um, try tip for dinner, like I'll eat six eggs in the morning, but also got to be supplementing throughout the day as well too. Like maybe yeah. I'm like this morning I'm traveling. I don't have time to make a breakfast in my room, but I eat a couple, three hard boiled eggs, yogurt, and some uh, concentrates. I'm like 75 grams of protein in this morning, yeah. you know, and I didn't have a kitchen. That's so, I totally agree with the protein powder. Like it's just a cheat code for hitting your protein goal. Yeah. It's so easy. I wouldn't like, rely on it for your protein, right? Yeah. I would do it more whole food, but you're like for me to reach – reach my goals of what I want to do. And we put on muscle mass. I'm going to need the protein powders to exceed my protein content just from eating red meat or yeah. chicken or fish or whatever it may be. Yeah. And I think for just people, people are so busy, man. I remember being like extremely busy. Luckily now, like my stuff is about health. So like I'm in the kitchen a lot and like I, I do have time to cook, but even then like protein powder is so easy. Like, yes. and it's also very affordable. Like any yeah. protein shake, even if you're doing the highest end protein you can possibly do it's a few bucks i started doing the, yeah sorry because people complain about how expensive protein is right but then you yeah. start calculating it. it's like actually for 30 or 25 grams of protein the price per gram compared to me going to eat a ribeye is actually very affordable yeah. or me going to buy like six eggs it's way more affordable for me to do a scoop of protein yeah right so you can complain all you want but really when it comes gram to gram protein powders if you get a good hunter is is better off for you yeah absolutely then like um people will also say like oh like isn't protein powder processed and whey protein is actually extremely gentle in the processing. Like you can make whey protein yourself at home. If you want, you could buy yogurt, skim off the top layer there. That is whey, and you could let it dry. And that would be like a protein powder. Obviously, you know, we both have the machines to make it a nice, pretty powder. That's not going to have like moisture in there and yeah. mold up and stuff like that. But like whey isn't that process. And like the beef isolate protein we make, you boil a cow yeah. and you skim off the top and you dry it. And that's, so it's not like some heavily processed food, I guess, like it's what some people think. And finding the right manufacturer that does it the right way. 
um, for instance, we use all cold, cold processed, cold yes. filtered proteins so that you're not heating, like our concentrates don't have any heat that are added to it. So you're keeping all the nutrients that come along with it. When I say 25 grams of protein per serving, there's really 25 grams of protein. Yeah. Like I didn't have to heat it up to get it. I didn't process it that way. We did all cold process. Oh, dude, people do the uh, nitrogen spiking. Yeah. They do like amino <laughs> acid spiking where they'll make their protein powder. They'll add a bunch of other amino acids to it. So they can put on their label, like you'll see like some stuff like, oh, a scoop has like 39 grams of protein. I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? Yeah. No, it, no, it doesn't. But, you know, people just want to do whatever to to make it work. Um, So you started like kind of like integrating the nutrition and stuff. What, like midway through your career towards the end? Like when did you start really dialing in all that? Yeah, man. I, mean, I was already world champion at the time. I became champion in 2014. And I used to make fun of some of my buddies that were ahead of the time were like gluten-free. Like when gluten-free first started, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I used to, Danny Castillo, he was the first one on our team and started going like gluten-free and we'd go out to eat as a team and I'd like make fun of him. Like, oh, give me all his gluten. I don't yeah, care. Yeah, you know, yeah. like I'll eat all of it. Yeah. I just worked my ass off to get there. And then um, as I got older and I met the right people, right? It's like people meeting you through social media, whoever it may be. Like I met Sam Calvita out of the training lab. He's actually here in Anaheim. Anyone who wants to get to like a peak performance level and you're down this way, I highly recommend looking at Sam Calavita. Um, he's the one that got me into the way that I eat now, the lifestyle that I live, the way that I train, the supplementations that I take. So a lot of this I owe to him. Yeah. Um, and I hope one day that I can bring it back to him, you know? Dude, I mean, okay, young people especially. Yes, you can. If you're like an athlete, you can burn through stuff like 100%. Like the gluten isn't going to affect you in that way. You're not going to be putting on weight when you're yeah. training multiple times per day at like a high level. But where it might mess you up and you might not realize it until you cut it out for 30 days is the joint inflammation, the brain inflammation, the slight gut irritation, you know, from zonulin increase in gluten. Even in there's studies, even in people who aren't gluten sensitive, you see this little spike in zonulin, which can increase leaky gut. Sure, it might not be that bad depending on your genetics, but it's like people need to try that shit out. Like go 30 days without it. Give you don't a know shot. until you try it, right? Exactly. Like I was one of those athletes, like it was harder to wake up in the morning. Like my cortisol levels were through the roof. Like my inflammation, you can go and get all this tested, which I do. My inflammation was through the roof. Like I was making shit harder on myself when I didn't need to. And yeah. then when I learned how to do it the right way, I was like, oh, wow, I can wake up and feel good in the morning. Like my sleep schedule is better. My training schedule is better. My skin health was better. I got rid of uh, psoriasis, which, yeah. you, which you can't get rid of supposedly, right? Like all this medication they try giving you for it. Like yeah, all, I did was, all I did was switch my diet. Yeah. Right. Um, going back to way that, you know, God created us to eat. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, you hunt, right? I do. Yeah. I've been hunting since I was 12 years old. I grew up eating usually game. Yeah. So venison, which elk is venison as well too. Um, uh, moose, everything. My dad got me hunting at a young age, just a way of life. Nice. Yeah. We got some buddies that hunt and we're going to go in October him and I for the first time. Some nice. of our buddies have been, what are you going to hunt? Um, we're gonna hunt deer. We got okay. some deer mule tag. Deer. Yeah, mule deer. Yeah, it's well, gonna be. T oh, it's gonna be tough. We're probably not gonna bag a deer. Where at? Um, Are you allowed to say where uh, you're like going? D D D nine. D9. Over near like Shaver Lake. Okay. Area. Yeah. So you're in California. Yeah, we yeah, all. Yeah. Last year. It's gonna it's be. It's gonna be very. Tough. It's gonna be very tough. We're probably not gonna get a deer because we've had friends that gone out a bunch in California on public yeah. land and just they don't. Mule deer, deer is so. Dude, we, last year we my me and my buddy went out and we scope he scoped them he froze a little bit and and moved and. Hunters were pressing you guys are rifle hunting, yeah? yeah? Yeah, we're rifle hunting. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you have a better chance with a rifle, but still, like, mule deer is one of the hardest animals that I've hunted. I've been hunting since forever. I, I only archery hunt now. I'm um, watching, well, I haven't hunted in two years because of my shoulder, but uh, it's going to be tough. No, it's going to be tough. Don't get discouraged. We're going to you know? get out there and it's going to be fun, but then we got to take you to, like, so, you got to go out of state. A hundred percent. So, what I want to do, like, with some of the squad is go. People have been hitting me up after I did a post, like, oh, I want to go hunting, like, you know, I got 7,000 acres. Yeah. And we have some bows. We've, we've shot some bows before. Yeah. Um, I just don't know if I'm that accurate with it. I feel way more accurate with my rifle. But, but same thing as like going and, and rolling jujitsu, you throw up a little archery range here and you start shooting like for a half hour a day, an hour a day, and you just yep. get consistent, you know, and yeah. you just start doing it. And then you'll never feel like hunting, hunting with, uh, you're still going to get a rush because you've never hunted before hunting with a rifle. Right. But shooting an animal from like 500 yards away. Yeah. I mean, because you know you're going to eat that animal, it's something that's fantastic. Right? You get very like you get to bring this home. You're going to feed your family with it, feed your friends. It's awesome. Yeah. But with a bow, you're getting up 40 yards or something, yeah. having to sneak up to it. It's like so primal. I've heard it's crazy. It's cool. Yeah, I, I need yeah. to try that. Yeah. Um. So your shoulder. So yeah. Uh, you know, you go into your last fight with a. You dislocated it a bunch of times in camp, and you're just like, fuck it. I'm not going to pull out of the fight. 
I'm going to get after it. And then after the fight. Yeah. I want to know that process. So then you go and I'm assuming you get a bunch of MRIs and then you're like, all right, now it's time to heal this thing. What happened? Describe that to people. Like, what has that been like? Yeah, I've had, I mean, even before or like after my fight, I had two surgeries on my left shoulder already. One through wrestling at college and then once in 2019. So I've had bad shoulders for over a decade. I'm just kind of been dealing with it. Even when I beat Garbrandt the, the two times to get my belt back, my shoulder was dislocating, like subluxing all the time. Yep. Like I had really bad shoulders. I just kind of dealt with it. I went and did stem cells. I would do as much physical therapy as possible, kind of hold it in the socket. But that last Sterling fight, I, like you said, I decided just to take it because 36 years old, Sterling striking sucked balls. I figured I could beat him with one arm. Um, but shoulders got worse and worse and worse. Yeah. Right. So I was working on back control, him taking my back. And I was escaping with Felipe Della Monica, my jiu-jitsu coach. And I wouldn't, he would get my back. I'd get my back flat and I'd do like a far reach yeah. around to get back into his guard. And uh, I subluxed my shoulder, actually more like dislocated my shoulder. And I was six weeks out from fight and it just got worse and yeah. worse and worse. Right. But so I dislocated like 20 times in training camp. And then after I knew, obviously I had to get surgery and I tried just to get put back together with my own parts. Um, <clears throat> because I dislocated my shoulder so many times, every time you dislocate your shoulder, it rubs on your collarbone mm -hmm. and it rubbed a hole in the top of my humerus. So mm -hmm. my, my, my shoulder wasn't round anymore. I had a big dent taken out of it. Mm -hmm. It's called the hill sacks lesion. And so my rotator cuffs are completely, so it's my shoulder in here. My your rotator cuffs come up and attached to that bone. We're completely torn from the bone. So we had to stretch them back. They retracted. They had turned into like beef jerky because they were, um, not connected anymore for like two years. Mm -hmm. And so him stretching them back, I had long story short, I had chronic rotator cuff failure too. It wasn't going to work. Yep. My rotator cuffs aren't working anymore. So I wanted to get put back together and avoid a shoulder replacement. I found a doctor, Dr. Itamura out of LA, which I'm seeing tomorrow. He does a trap transfer. Mm -hmm. And so he's, he's one of the only doctors in the world that does. He's done with other athletes. He's, you know, works with LA Dodgers. So he's worked with a lot of shoulders. What he'll do is he took a piece of my lower trap out of my back and he replaced my infra and my supraspinatus. Mm -hmm. comes and attaches here with my lower trap, a piece of it. He took a cadaver bone from someone's hip that passed away that was under 30 years old, cut an orange slice out of it and cut an orange slice out of my shoulder and mm -hmm. puzzle pieced it in there. And then he also had to take a piece of my lower lat and connect it for my front rotator cuff as well. Yeah. All of it attached. Um, but it's just not working. I had to go through two surgeries with him to get all that. Mm -hmm. um, like the bone healed to me, my, my trap transfer and my lat transfer, they have healed from the MRIs. They show that they're attached, but they're just not fully working. And I don't believe that time's going to, like, I can't raise my arm. Like, mm -hmm. I can't like comb my hair or like take yeah, a drink yeah. of water. Like I, it's just fucked right yeah. now. Um, so so you want to be an MMA fighter guys. Yeah. <laughs> It's a motherfucker. Yeah. Um, so I got to see him tomorrow and kind of like really have a, a serious conversation of like, hey, man, this has been two years of my life, two surgeries. I've gone through this hoping that I can get peace back together. It's kind of like, what's next, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, th I think I'm a candidate now for a reverse shoulder replacement, which I was trying to avoid, but I'm living life for the last two years with one arm. Luckily, this company, Wild Society, has kept me very mentally busy, so I haven't been able to be as depressed as yeah. I would be otherwise. Yeah, it's a big part of injuries, just like, you know, the mental side of things. Waking up in the morning and feeling like you have something to do. Yeah. Right? And if without a company, me being so busy, I would probably go through some, which I did go through some depression anyways, just going out of, of a sport. But, um, yeah, so most likely I have to have, like, a real hard conversation with them about, like, what's my path forward? Because, I, I mean, it's unexplainable. I, I, I don't, like don't know why my arm doesn't want to work. Like yeah. everything's attached. He's done this surgery before he's seen better gains than what I've gotten out of it. So I, I really don't know. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a puzzle that I'm really trying to figure out and I'm thinking I'm probably going to have to do a reverse shoulder replacement. Dude, it's such a motherfucker of a sport, man. Like we have uh, one of our good buddies is Todd Duffy. Oh yeah. And, um, dude, just the injuries and shit that like you guys go through is just, Insane. Yeah. Insane. And I, I want to like, so the mental part of that, because I think a lot of people watching this struggle with, I mean, depression and just like not being able to get up and do the things that they know they need to do. 
what advice do you have for people out there that are you know suffering with that? Because it's a lot. I love that question because um, I've had a lot of think about this because of how prevalent it is in our world right now with going through depression and some family members I know that are have gone through it. It's like <clears throat> what I just described with having a self worth, having a purpose, having a goal in mind is the best way to not be depressed. 100%. Like if I wake up in the morning, I'm grinding on something to achieve a goal. Yeah. I'm going to feel worthy. I'm going to feel confident. I'm going to feel good about myself. But if I wake up in the morning and I don't know what I'm doing today and I really don't have anything to motivate me, then I'm going to sit back and think about shit that doesn't make me feel good. Hundred percent. I, I have a ton to, I have a ton to think about that should make me, make me very depressed on my situation. Becoming, you know, being a world champion, still think that I should be at the top, not being able to compete, taken out of my sport, made some serious mistakes throughout my career, things that like really should fucking bother me. But I just distract myself. Yeah. You know? Just go forward. Yeah. Pick something good and go forward, dude. I try I try to tell people that all the time, bro. Like, um, you know, like a, a couple of years ago, my dad died. And I can easily see how that would just throw somebody into just a downward spiral. And like you do kind of make a choice as a human being of just like, I was just like, you know what? I think he would like to see me succeed. And like then is actually when my company started to blow up and I started mm. to do really well on social media. And it's like, I don't know, like people will criticize this advice, you know, like all the mental health professionals out there or whatever. Like, I don't know, like people are getting real like woke with it. It's because they're getting paid. Yeah, it's because they're getting paid. Yeah, they're getting paid. <laughs> the more people that are feet. feeling that way, the more they're going to get paid. At some point, especially I'm talking to like young men, like you do have to like be like, all right, this happened to me, whatever it is you're going through in your life. Like I'm going to pack the fuck up and move forward. And it's it sounds so simple and people are like, oh, no, there's like, Depression well, and like it's the, easier in the brain. to create an excuse for yourself of why you should feel the way you should feel. Hundred yeah. percent. And I created all these excuses in my head of oh, I shouldn't be doing this. Oh, it's it's wrong of me to like film videos and like get stoked on like my brand and my product while I'm going through this. And like, how will like my like people in my family like view this if I'm making a video like getting stoked about our electrolytes or something like the day after my dad's funeral? Like, or is that like a bad thing? It's like no, like fuck that. Like, do whatever you feel in your heart is good and shit that helped me tons i mean it's i don't know it's, I mean, it's no i think it's i think it's money man because the way because what else what else are you gonna do you're gonna you're gonna sit around and feel sorry about your situation yeah right? and if you don't give yourself i'm not saying like not think about these things right i'm not saying like which i do this a lot like just bury down feelings and never think about them ever yeah. again but oh no i bring i you know i go to the jungle i drink ayahuasca there we go. i do you know i do all all that i think that's important but um like we had a, a kid in here named Cookie King. And like, I think one of the things you just said is so important because he's just like going through all these issues and he like can't get in shape and like he, he has ups and downs with it. Um, I told him this and I think a lot of people like, it's kind of like you, you feel sorry for yourself. You don't know how good you have it. Like, I think if he went to like the slums of Mexico or like India or something, like one of the best things, I lived in Mexico for a year when I was 11, just randomly. And then it, it makes you go, okay, even with everything going on, I'm really, really fucking lucky. And so like, because of that, I should push forward and stop feeling sorry for myself. Yeah. That's like big. Like, I'm sure there's days where it's like, dude, my shoulder, like what the, f I've gotten all these surgeries. It should be better this, but like, you're not just like staying in a bed feeling fucking sorry for yourself. You're like, I have a family to provide for. I have good stuff to put out there. Like yeah. go. That's what people need to do. Yeah. I can feel sorry for myself. Get fat, sit on the couch. I mean, I have enough money to sit back and not have to worry too much, right? Yeah. But that's just not going to make me feel good about myself, no. you know? Um, How do you stay in shape now? Because your workouts, have, I've definitely, you've had to adapt. I saw you doing some weights and stuff. Like, Yeah, I can do certain weights. I mean, I have to work around, like I said, like I can't, I can't do like a normal bench press, right? But I could do some push-ups. I could do some decline push-ups. So for, for instance, like my feet on the ground and elevated on like a bench or something. Yeah. I'll start doing push-ups to keep my chest going. There's certain things I can't do with my shoulder, but there's, if there's a will, there's a way, right? Like I can work out my legs like crazy and that muscle transfer will come with it. I can work out my core. Um, I'll do the chest by doing like different s sorts of workouts. My back, I can work out all day long and which is going to help me build my rotator cuffs at the same time. So yeah. I just find what I can do and I just do it a lot. Dude, absolutely. I always see these comments like, Brennan, I'm trying to get in shape, but I heard I broke my wrist skateboarding or something. It's like run. Yeah. Do legs. Like, what? like what? Like, I really don't get it. Like I got a pinched nerve in jujitsu one time. It sucked. It was one of the most annoying injuries. 
And I was just hammering legs and like doing what I could upper body wise. Yeah. And like the guy I was going to, 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 you know, help me with the pinch nerve. He was like, dude, you're healing extremely quick. It's like, you're telling the body, Hey, you, you have to do shit. Like there's something about that. Well, I think not only just the way you're working out, but also your diet. Right. So, and also there's a lot of stuff that's going to help you with inflammation. Right. And if you're eating the right way, like your body's not worrying about the inflammation in your gut. It's worrying about the inflammation where your nerves at or inflammation in my shoulders. So if I'm eating healthy, if I'm sleeping the right way, if I'm sitting in my hyperbaric chamber, if I'm doing red light therapy, if I'm doing cold plunges, like all these things are to attack inflammation. Yeah. Because everyday life, living, breathing the air we breathe is going to create inflammation, right? So yep. the less of it you can create, the more you're going to be able to heal your body. So totally. it's, a, it's are... a testament to the way that you work out or the way you eat is going to help you heal faster. Yeah, that's facts. Um, what is like your supplement routine? Like when you wake up in the morning, what is that like? We'll, we'll do a little diet and something. Like, what's like a normal day? Yeah, diet. So I, I naturally fast and I don't even mean to. It's just because of, I don't know, I just naturally probably do like 16 hours just because I'm not hungry in the morning. Um, I'll get just, up. I, I eat real light in the morning. I, like I've tried doing like big amounts of protein first thing when I wake up. I don't really feel great on that. Like it's a little bone broth in the morning, then maybe like brunch time. I start. I love eat. a bone broth. Yeah. Bone broth is great in the morning, but again, I, I'm probably not eating until eleven or twelve o'clock a lot of times. But I usually do my workouts in the morning, um, so I so I can get to work right after it. And then I get so busy that I'm like, oh shit, I need to fucking eat something. Yeah. I got two hundred grams of protein I need to eat today. So then yeah, I'll go do bone broth. I'll do like six eggs. I'll add some some sort of like meat to it, right? Some bacon, some sausage, like whatever it may be. Scramble them over easy so real heavy protein breakfast not not much carbs in the morning yeah i don't eat carbs really in the morning um throughout the day i will mainly i say more in the evening i do and then i'll get some carbs from my proteins as well too um i eat a ton of greek yogurt i'm gonna always put protein in it yeah Um, dude oh that's the biggest cheat code ever is the protein loaded yogurt bowls dude it's insane well yeah we got no sugar in our protein and i can make my protein sweeter and like, I'm actually not just eating a plain Greek yogurt and then I'll add some berries or some goji berries to yep. it or something. It's like, makes it so easy. Dude, it's fire. People send me all these recipes they do with ours. Like, you know, like the chocolate with like frozen banana and they put like coconut on it. And it's like, dude, yeah. it's, it's the best. Um, t- Really meat heavy. A lot of red meat too. Yeah. I'm trying to put on size. Ribeyes for lunch. Tri-tip for dinner. I mean, I, I do my fair share of greens. Um, I, I masticate juice usually every day as well, too. That's something I got from the training lab. Um, and then supplementation-wise, I mean, big on omega-3s, if you can get it from a good source. Um, branched chain amino acids from the training lab. Um, all the protein that I create. and Vitamin D, either naturally or I'll supplement it when I'm not in the sun enough. Um, yeah, I, I'm the wor- I'm a bad vitamin D sale. Let me make a vitamin D with olive oil. And like, I, it's just the truth. I can't not speak the truth. I'm like, I don't really take this supplement from, you know, beginning of summer until probably about well, September. I'll start it. Yeah, I live here. I'm like, <laughs> and I get my vitamin D levels checked like every month. And it's like, I do start taking it in September. And if you're not getting total body sun exposure, you should just take it year round, you know, probably five to 10,000 I use, uh, you know, depends on whatever, but mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like it's a funny thing. If I had a bunch of investors or like a huge company, they'd be like, "Don't tell people you don't take the vitamin D for three months out of the year." Well, if you, you lived stupid. in Michigan, you would have to exactly. You know? Yeah, like you, you really live would. in Del Mar, dude. Like. Vitamin D, yeah, no, it's so nice. We get so much sun. <laughs> yeah. Vitamin D is almost the most frustrating thing ever in a way because of the fact that almost nobody listening to this knows their vitamin D levels. Yeah, and it's a clear example. I always use the vitamin D example as a failed medical system. It's the most clear thing that it's failed. One, the test to do it costs a few dollars. Yeah. That's why if you go get your vitamin D checked right now, anybody can go do it. It's going to be 20 to $40 because it's a few bucks and they got to pay whatever the people to do it. Okay. When you go to the doctor, almost nobody knows their vitamin D. You yeah. can ask them for a test. They'll probably be able to give that to you, but it's a joke. People go in, they get antidepressants, they get anti-anxiety medications, they get all the shit. Nowhere do they check their vitamin D, which is Western medicine says, not some holistic health shit. Western medicine says it's firmly associated with depression, anxiety, immune function issues. So yeah, tangent there, but like it's, if that's not a clear sign guys that shit's fucked up in the medical system that you don't know your vitamin D levels yeah. and your doctor hasn't like done that for you. Especially how easy it is. Go to a website called request a test. You can order whatever blood work you want from yourself. You don't have to go to a doctor to order yeah. your own blood work. You can order it yourself. You pay for it. It's a lot cheaper just to pay for it yourself. It's like 
I can get a CBC for $19. Yeah. Right? I know everything about all my blood work with the CBC for the most part. And it's 19 bucks. And then I go to a, a quest diagnostics or a lab corp mm -hmm. and they test my blood. I usually do my blood work at least once a quarter, if not a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, I've been diving into the test. Have you ever done a GI map test? Uh, is that for like what you eat? The like gut. You, yeah. Yes. You mail in your poop to the lab. Oh, I haven't done the poop. Dude, uh -huh. you, dude, you should do a GI map test. It's like, uh, the cutting edge, like what all the functional medicine doctors are on the last. Yeah, like, shit in a cup. Dude, you do, you do, you do. That's yeah. got to be the worst. And then part. you got to mail it in. I was like, hey, baby, can you, job. baby, can you mail this uh, package into the UPS? She's like, yeah, this thing smells like shit. You know? Yeah, exactly. And like, it's crazy, dude. Like, uh, I came back from Mexico and I was like having a little bit of nausea, and I'm like, this is like, I got sick in Mexico, like food poisoning. Right? Yeah. Most people would just think, oh, it's just food poisoning, and it'll, it'll go away. But I, I know more stuff about this than like the average person I'd say. So I'm like, you know what? Let me get a full gut panel. Comes back. I got some E. coli strains elevated. I had H. pylori and I worked with my functional medicine doctor. You just take a few supplements, mastic gum, wormwood, olive leaf, oregano. It's individualized for everybody. Retest gone. And it's just like, it's, who, who do you do this test with? I do it with a guy named uh, Dr. Justin. Um, he's out of Austin, Texas right now. And I do you it all him your shit. It, so it's done through the lab. That's So that's even crazier thing. We just did a content piece on it. Yeah. It's 100% it works because the lab company is separate from Dr. Justin. Yeah. When I'm testing and retesting, there's no way for like your functional medicine doctor to be like, look, I, I helped you. Yeah. No, it's clear as day in the test, which is separate from him. It's just you can take certain substances that reduce H. pylori, which is a bacteria that's associated with ulcers. It's just a joke, dude. Like people around the world will go into the doctor with ulcers or Crohn's and stuff like that. And they're never giving them this test Yeah, that's available. And you can see a picture of what's going on in your gut. So yeah, we, we, I've been diving into that well, a lot. They make lately. more money to give you drugs. They make more money to give you drugs and they cannot order the lab test for you. If you go in right now to the doctor, your normal doctor under insurance and you say, Hey, I've been feeling, you know, eh, some issues. I want an organic acids test. I want a neurotransmitter test. I want a GI map test. I want a full horn. And the, do the doctor goes, you know what? I like TJ Dillashaw. He's one of my favorite fighters. Um, I'm going to order him all this test. The insurance company could go back to him and, and go, you just gave a healthy patient all this lab work. That is fraud. They can lose their medical license like that. And Damn. many, many have. Wow. Yeah. So that's why when you go to the doctor, the normal doctor, they're not giving people blood work and they have to, you have to recite certain scripts like to, to be able to get lab tests from your doctor. You have to say you have certain issues and go to maybe a specialist. Oh, well, you got to go to the gastroenterologist. It's such a joke. We've been uncovering it lately in a lot of podcast episodes and it's, it's fucking frustrating. Damn. Yeah. I mean, I'm fortunate enough to where I can afford it. I mean, some of the doctors I go to, they don't accept insurance. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. Me too. So that's so the thing. To, like, I I'm can just, afford yeah. it. I go to like ways to well out in Austin and they do a great job of like, tracking a lot of this stuff and seeing like what my like what foods I eat or what proteins absorb better in my body that don't create inflammation and things like that. But yeah. I've never done the GI tract test. Yeah. That. Yeah. It's a good one. I mean, it's the future of medicine is stuff like what ways to well is doing. Yeah. And, um, that guy, the founder of it described that insurance system on Rogan's podcast That's a while right. ago. Like, um, just like it's broken and it's never going to get fixed guys. And it's unfortunate. And yeah, like right now it's a couple thousand bucks like per year to really dial in your health like that, but it will get cheaper over time. Yeah. I think. I yeah. hope. I mean, if you can afford it, you feel a shit ton better though. It's worth, it's worth every dollar. You yeah. Know, like, I mean, me going and buying a new car. Yeah. hundred percent. Like, dude, like people think like you're not like, sometimes you're not like what you think you are. Like people be like, I'm just somebody who's really tired all the time or, Oh, I'm somebody who just has stomach issues or something like this. It's like, you can actually get the work done to see what's going on in your body. And like now they can do neurotransmitter tests, like your dopamine to adrenaline ratio. They can look at your mitochondria. Well, if your mitochondrial function is all fucked up, you, you might not be somebody who's just always tired. You might need to fix that. Yeah. So it's like with all the food we eat, with all the supplements we take, like, I don't know, man, like anybody can feel pretty fucking good if they Agreed. do this stuff. Like it's not that hard. Yeah. I feel like I'm a perfect testament to that because I was doing it the wrong way. Right. I was lucky that genetically that I can get away with it, but I was doing everything the wrong way. I was training wrong. I was sleeping wrong. I was eating wrong. I wasn't doing the right supplementation. I became a world champion, but I felt 10 times better when I started doing it the right way. Yeah. You know, that's so. facts. So what's next for TJ? Um, I'm pushing wild society nutrition. It's my everyday life right now and creating new products. We have some exciting stuff coming out. Right now, we're in Sprouts Farmer's Market nationwide with our two protein powders, our isolates and our concentrates. 
Um, we're on Amazon, Amazon Prime, looking to spread more doors right now. Um, we have a collagen protein coming into Sprouts in November. Uh, we got energy drinks out there that are, I pretty much just, like you said, created everything that I want for myself. Yeah, right? 100%. It's so, so fun. I'm a, I'm a caffeine junkie. I wouldn't say like, you know, drinking a bunch of caffeine is great for you, but if I am going to drink it, I want to make the best. Yeah. And so I made an energy drink that's made with organic green tea. We added the alpha GPC, the L theanine. I and love it. alpha so GPC, bro. Helps with my, it makes my mood just makes me feel so much better. Same way that the um, adaptogens do from our organic mushrooms and our protein. Um, I just started creating things. We got we got beef liver with uh, yeah. uh, added vitamin C to it. It's grass fed beef liver from our own cattle. We have our own cattle out in Montana um, because I you know I'm helping with my iron levels, but I'm helping the vitamin C in there to absorb the iron. Yeah, uh, we have a lot of stuff that's coming out here, and we we just launched July first. So nice. we've been in a rocket ship. I'm trying to keep up with it. Dude, it's so fun. I mean, one of the most fun things is designing a product, getting, you know, you, you try the samples of it, then you like find something that's perfect. And then you start to see the mock-ups with like the, the bag design and maybe some samples. And then like it actually hits and people start getting it. And they like it. And they like it. Yeah. It's one of the best feelings I ever do. Like when we yeah. drop a new flavor of electrolytes and then like, you know, like we, we all try it here. We have like a team that tries them and everything. And like, we're like, dude, this is fire. And then people start to get it and we get the feedback it's just so sick dude it's, i like sampling our products like we just did a grand opening in uh lawndale sprouts had a grand opening and i personally went myself and started handing out free samples yep. because i like to see people's reactions of, of the actual yeah. product like i made something good enough to where like i'm confident to give it out like i'll give out as much like i'm like a drug dealer on there with like yeah. single serve yeah, sachets yeah. just handing it out because I know people are going to like it. I'll yeah. go work out at uh, Lifetime Fitness or 24 Hour Fitness and I'll just bring single serves with me. People recognize me. I just like, hey, try this out because it's a good fucking product. I'm the exact same way, dude. My car is filled up with electrolytes. Yeah. When people say what up, I'm like, oh, you got to try this. And it gets them stoked. Um, yeah. So I got to ask um, Sugar Sean versus Marab. I got to ask your opinions on that fight, you know? Yeah, man. I feel like Marab's got a great style to beat him, but he's also very like, you know, his game plan, right? And Sean's smart. He's got long range. I'm rooting for uh, O'Malley. I think he's better for the weight class. He's better for the sport. He's more entertaining. Um, Rob's also funny, but I think, I think Sean can get it done. It's going to be a tough testament to keep him off him. Cause um, Rob's going to be desperate for a take. He's going to be goes, so be desperate. From, yeah. He's going to be shooting. He'll from shoot everywhere. like 30, 40 shots. Yeah. He's going to have to defend, defend, defend. But I think with uh, O'Malley's footwork and range, He's going to ultimately end up finishing up, I think. Yeah. No, Sean's got an amazing takedown defense. His, his grappling is really good. And I feel like I'm what I'm concerned about with Marab is he... Okay, we were at CJI. We were at CJI the, in Vegas. And uh, I brought my buddy from up north from 10th Planet San Mateo. I bought him a ticket to the CJI event. So he was like sitting like right over here because we couldn't get all the seats together. And we look, everyone stands up and is like, what the fuck? And we're like, what's going on? Like, whatever. We sit back down. Our buddy was the dude sitting next to the guy in that video. I don't know if you saw this video. Oh, Rob, Rob went up the yeah, stairs. Yeah, so Rob yeah. jumps. The, the, our buddy has to sit next to some random guy, and he said the dude was just, like, yelling at Marab, like, Sugar Sean's your daddy, like, all this shit. First of all, never do that. I love when pro athletes, like, we're on our test and shit. I love when pro athletes go, huh? Like, what are you talking Actually about? Actually call like, someone out? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, it's like, what? Like, what are, you, what are you yelling at Marab for? Whatever. But then Marab jumps up there. Our our friend, you can see in the video, if you watch the video, he goes, hey, man, I don't know what the fuck you are. I'm not getting your back here. And he shakes the dude's uh, hair and leaves. And it's like, I thought it was funny, I thought, you know, but it's like also like, I don't know if that's the most mentally strong move um, to be like, you know, just jumping over a fence at a public event and shaking somebody's, you know, Sugar Sean might get under his skin. Is what I'm yeah, saying. I feel you. Um, I think his biggest problem is he's too predictable. Mm -hmm. He's not going to set up his shots. He's going to push forward. He's going to shoot. He's going to try to push Sean against the cage. Sean's going to circle too much. He's got great knees down the middle. I mean, yes, he might come out and win a couple rounds with what he does, but I think eventually, I think uh, O'Malley catches him. I mean, that's just my personal opinion. Um, and it could go the other way. That's the greatest thing about MMA is this sport's so hard to figure out. I try doing some sports betting every now and then. And uh, even just like last weekend, I used my booking and tried betting on a couple of fights. I thought for sure that uh, Urseg had the fight against Kaikar France. After watching 
the fight and how it went down, and then Kai Car France finishes him. You know? Hey, so, I picked Kai Car France. I think go. I think I was like three out of five that night, so it wasn't a it wasn't that good of a yeah uh, pick. But yeah, no MMA's. That's why people love it. Bro. Yeah, like even when you just see the, the betting lines and stuff, like that's kind of you can even see within the betting lines why people love the sport. It's so unpredictable. No. It's so difficult. There's so many ways you can lose. There's so many ways a fight can go. You can even have weird shit happen in a fight. A dude's foot can get stuck in the yep. in the like side of the cage yep. or whatever. If someone could just get cut and maybe they're not even getting their ass whipped that much and they get cut. And the or you got goes. someone like me that goes in there with the bad shoulder and you don't know about. It. Like I feel fucking horrible about that. Like a lot of times, like I knew that like probably a lot of people were betting money on me and like I still. I mean, I went out there knowing that I could win. But obviously went out there hindered, right? Yeah. So you, you gotta don't know. do it, man. The the pay structure in the UFC. Look, we have a lot of <laughs> friends who have fought in the UFC. They, they, they don't pay people enough. We'll just no. say that. And I also think the pay structure is messed up. Um, I think they could create a better sport probably by doing um, larger to show money, and you'd still do, uh, you know, to win money. But just changing that ratio around, I think, would probably create better fights. We'll see. But um. Yeah, dude, let's go hit the store. I think the people want to see what you get at the grocery store. Uh -huh. And yes, sir. TJ, yeah. thank you so much. Of course, Appreciate it, bro. Keeping the world healthy. Let's go.